Hey friends, it's Miss Keela from the Fredrickson Library. Today I'm going to teach you how to paint a rainbow. What you need to start is something to paint on. I'm using a canvas, but if you don't have a canvas, that's okay. You can use paper or cardboard, whatever you have available to you. You'll also need some paint brushes. I have different sizes and shape bristles to get some different shapes in my painting. I also have a cup of water and some paint. I chose colors that are typical for a rainbow, but you can use any colors you want. To get started, I'm using my biggest brush for my background. What you need to do is take some of your blue. I put about half on my paintbrush and some white. Then you're going to make some fun shapes in the top of your canvas for the sky. If you go back and forth, it makes some kind of wispy shapes. It kind of helps you look like clouds without making clouds in your sky. Starting in different places will also give your sky some lighter areas and darker areas. I always like to leave little spots where there's a little bit of white and a little bit of blue that didn't quite mix. That helps it give texture and makes it look like the sky has a lot going on in it. Since my main focus is going to be a rainbow, I'm going to paint my canvas most of the way down and just have a little bit of grass at the bottom. If you find areas that are a little bit too dark, you can just go back over top of them with white. Or if you have areas that you want a little bit darker, you can go over with just a little bit of blue. I haven't been rinsing my brush yet because I want to keep the blue on my brush and have different shades of blue on my background. You also have to decide how far down you want your sky to go. I think my sky is a little too dark in this area. I want to go over with just some white. For my painting, I want my rainbow to be asymmetrical. That means I want it to be a different shape than a normal rainbow. It's going to be closer in this area and further away over here. When you do an arc for your rainbow, that's a symmetrical rainbow. You can choose to do symmetrical if you want. Before we start our rainbow, you want to make sure your background is completely dry or the colors are going to mix. I'm using acrylic paint, which is really good for mixing on top of. Okay, I am done with my sky. I'm going to do the bottom of my paint, 
my canvas with grass. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting half green and half white. And I didn't rinse off my brush because blue is a color that we use to make green. So just going to change the shade of the green. It's not going to really make it look blue. It's just going to make it look a different shade of green. to my canvas I always try to go the whole length of the canvas to make it smooth I typically start in the middle too and spread it out both ways so the colors are more even and match a little bit better just like my sky I want some areas to be a little bit darker and a little bit lighter Since this is the background, I do want it to be lighter than what I'm going to be using for my rainbow colors. When your brush is almost out of paint, it was a good time to go over the area where the grass meets the sky. It just kind of helps blend it together. So you don't have a really hard line of where your sky and grass meet. Okay, I am happy with my background right now. I'm going to give it a few minutes to dry, probably about five. So grab a snack or read a book for a few minutes. Before you get started with your rainbow, you want to make some decisions. So I said I was going to make mine asymmetrical. I wanted it to be bigger on one side and smaller on the other. I'm starting mine here a little bit wider and then I'm going to make it smaller as it's leaving the canvas. That's going to make it look like you're walking up the rainbow when you're looking at my painting. But if you like it better to be completely symmetric, you would just make a big arc through your sky, touching the grass on both sides. You could also make your asymmetrical rainbow, but smaller over here and wider at the top. You need to choose whatever you want to do and it's gonna be perfect for your painting. I'm ready to start my rainbow. I'm going to choose a brush that's a little bit smaller than the original one I was using. And I said I was going to make it asymmetric and I'm making it wider at this side, smaller at this side. So I'm going to start my brush on this side so and use this as the width that the smallest part will be of each color. Then I can just add more as I get closer to the bottom. So first I'm starting with red and you can choose any spot on your canvas to start, I think I'm going to start about here because I don't want it right in the corner because red is the top color of mine. Some colors are going to be a little bit light and you will have to do another layer when it dries so you can't see the background behind it. And I don't really care if mine's perfectly straight or arced. So I'm just kind of going back and forth as I go down. When you push your brush, the bristles go to a point kind of right here and that helps you make a straight line. So if you push all your brush bristles out, it can help you draw a nice straight line instead of trying to hold it straight up and down and make the line completely. 
be straight. You may also like how this looks um, with a little bit of transparency. I can still see the sky through my red. I actually kind of like it while I'm looking at it because sometimes rainbows are transparent like that when you look at them in the sky. But if you want yours to be dark and bold, you can go back over top of this once it's completely dry with another layer of red. I'm trying to get some of the red paint off of my brush so I can move to orange. I'm gonna wash it in the water and get most of it out. Keep in mind, if you want, you can make your rainbow different colors. They don't have to be the traditional colors. I love creativity, so I would love to see if you guys choose other colors and how you make your rainbow look. So for orange, I'm gonna start kind of close to the red. If you want, you can leave a little gap because we're gonna kind of blend them together. But if you touch it while it's wet, you're just gonna get the red into your orange or your second color of your rainbow. My red is pretty dry because it's such a thin layer. So when I touch it places like here and there, it didn't really mix with my orange. But if you have pretty wet red, you want to try to keep your colors from touching each other. Like there, I got red because it was still wet. My orange has some chunks in it because it's kind of old, so I'm just going to wipe those off on my paper towel. Okay, now I'm going to rinse out my brush and put it down for a minute because I want to blend my red and orange together before I move on to my next color and that part needs to be done while they're still a little bit wet. So I'm taking my big brush that I rinsed out and just going to go over top and just go back and forth the whole way down. It's going to mix some of the orange with the red and it will look like a nice smooth transition. Just like we kind of did with the sky and the grass. If you have spots like this, there's a lot of blue. Just try to work on it until that is covered up. You'll also be able to tell if you need a little bit more paint in an area before you move on. Alright, I think I'm happy with how that looks. I'm going to make sure I rinse this out because I'm going to need it to blend my next two colors together and I don't want red and orange in that brush right now. When you're rinsing your brush, just rub it on the bottom of your water cup and then I put it on a paper towel and just kind of twist it around to make sure all the paint is out. So with my clean brush that's a little smaller, I'm going to do my next color which is yellow. Yellow is probably going to need a couple of layers depending how dark your yellow is and how dark your background is. Every time I work with yellow, I have to do a couple coats for it to look yellow. This one's actually not looking too bad today. Yellow will take all this orange and, and mess it up if I get too close. So. I'm trying to keep a little bit more of a, a line in between. I hope you're 
yellow lays as nicely as mine just did. I've had experiences with yellow where I've had to do multiple coats. I think this looks look really good. Also, if you see that there are places where you can see where you like lift your brush like that, I like to make sure I take it from one side to the other without lifting the brush up and that will smooth all that out. But while I'm laying it down, I like to go back and forth just to make some texture and make it look interesting. All right, I'm rinsing out my little brush. I'm gonna get my big brush to blend the orange and yellow together. So it's clean and I'm just gonna start going back and forth. If you have a lot of wet orange still, be careful. It can pull into the yellow and turn all of your yellow orange. Just kind of make some lighter orange before you turn to yellow. I like how that happened. All right, rinse out my big brush and dry it. Next color is my green. I want to keep this one pretty dark because I added white to it to make my grass. So if I keep this stripe dark, it will stand out when we get to the grass line. My green paint is a little bit dry right now. I'm having trouble smoothing it out. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And blend them together. Just be careful, this is the same thing as the orange next to yellow. Green shows up a lot if you touch it on the yellow. So try to just push a little bit of your green into your yellow to smooth that transition line. I'm rubbing it back and forth a little bit because that's helping the green just move a little bit over for the blending instead of using it the other way I was using it. Right, I'm going to rinse my brush. Now I'm ready for my blue.
rinsing and switching. So blue is a little bit darker. So if we can push the blue over to the, that was really wet. We'll just blend the blue into the green. It's important when you're painting, just take your time, do the best you can. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine or exactly like anybody else's. It's perfect when it's perfect for you. I like little imperfections in my paintings. It just makes them look more real. Okay. And I'm ready for my purple. purple is a little bit thicker so I'm having a hard time laying it down but I just turn my brush sideways and kind of wipe it rub it back and forth and it's helping move it to where I want it to go and since this is the other end of my rainbow I want to make sure this lines a little bit cleaner just like the red one so I'm gonna do that trick where I push the bristles down and I'm going upside down just because I want them to be pointing this way and try to draw a nice straight line. I'm okay if it doesn't, if it's not perfectly straight, I'm okay with that too. But just slowly draw the line. If you make a little mistake, go back and forth until it looks how you want. I'm pretty happy with that line, so I'm going to stop right there and blend my purple into my blue.
All right, and I'm finished with my rainbow. So now if you want, you can add some extra things to your rainbow picture. There's a lot of space. You can add something down here in the grass, something up here in the sky. Um, for me, I'm just gonna leave it like this, but if you do add something, I would love to see it. You can post this on Instagram or Facebook and tag the Fredrickson Library. Thank you so much for painting with me and I hope you had a great time.